Good morning, my friends. I'm very cold this morning. Um, I might have to sneak and put pants on. That way I won't be fully naked. Maybe some, some, somebody in his mom's basement can report me for not being fully naked. Like I was reported six weeks ago. <laughs> anyway, um, good morning and I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope it is a wonderful day and I hope it's a beautiful day. Today I want to talk about regrets and I don't like living with regrets and I don't really have any. Many, I should say. I don't have many. I have one. I, um, well, I guess my biggest regret is like I had a job at Energizer Battery and um, at the time the person that um, was heading the flashlight division was Australian and he was like a really good friend of mine. I was very young, like 21 or something. And um, I was like a Kelly girl. I was um, supporting a couple of directors and he was the head of the flashlight division and he was from Australia and he really liked me and he was going back and he was like, Hey, if you ever wanted to go to Australia, I think you'd really love it there. And my wife and I would be happy to host you and I could get you a job at Energizer. And you know what I said? Oh, I don't think I could do that. So I kind of always regret that, but maybe there was a reason I didn't do that. But I do have something that I regret from the other day. And since this little, um, my naked truth is, is like my little, my little self therapy right now. Thank you for being my therapist. If you're still watching, um, the other night we were in the hot tub and it's, it's a relatively large hot tub. So, um, sometimes if there's like more than one group in there, like people are kind of like talking amongst themselves. It's not like a community thing or anything. So that happened last, the, the night before last. Um, we were in there and these two guys came in. It was on Easter. And these two guys came in and whatever. We were, they were in their own conversation. We were in our own. I think we said hi and that was about it. And... I always dip into other people's conversations. I think that was an, ex a, an acquired skill from having been a bartender. But I overheard them, him talking and the one guy had been either very sick or had a near death experience while he was sick and was in the hospital. And he was talking about how this bird continuously came to his window. And then also what he said was, he said, he said, even though my body was dying, I felt all of the energy in my soul and I'm very connected to my soul. And actually I think a lot of times that it's my soul speaking and, um, I can go very, very deep in that, but that's not the point of this video, but maybe in another video, um, But he said, you know, he said, my, my soul felt energy, but my body was dying and my body felt lifeless and I could feel the death, but I knew the energy was in my soul. And he said to his friend, I know this sounds really crazy. And he kept saying, I know this sounds really crazy, but I know this sounds really crazy, but, and I sat there and I think I could have really offered some advice to this man or at least some confirmation that, you know, what he felt was real. And, um, we are souls having a, a human experience and, um, the whole human experience we go into, into society is like kind of met to, to keep us down. And, um, I used to think, man, I hate the matrix and man, I hate like all of this, like, system that's designed to keep us down but I actually think it's designed to keep us down because not everybody is meant to go through to the next level 
until they're ready. And unless you're connected to your soul, you're not going to go to the next level. Um, or at least that's my train of thought on it. And what I really have, this video is about regrets, right? So what my regret is, is that I didn't tell this man, hey, like, you're not crazy. Your soul's never going to die. All you're going to do is change form. And your soul knows that this lifestyle or this lifetime is just an experience. So that's why, sir, your soul felt the energy. Um, but he was really kind of embarrassed about kind of talking about it, or at least that's what I picked up on. And his friend was like, no, no, I mean, I believe in stuff like that too, but you know, so that's my regret. And, um, I don't want to keep holding on to that, that I had that regret. So maybe somebody out here in this world needs to hear it. And, um, yeah, your soul doesn't die. So that's why that man laying in his, ho in his hospital bed felt his lifeless body, but didn't feel, or, but felt the energy in its soul, in his soul. Um, a lot of people with near death experiences feel the same way. And I'm not a hundred percent sure if he was, um, just extremely ill or if he had had a near death experience because I mean, I was dipping into his conversation. So I think the only way I can make it right, because it's like been two nights ago now is that I just say, you know, is I, is I just tell the story. That's how I'm going to make it right. Because what I should have told that man the other night, even though I was dipping, I should have said, you know, I'm sorry for dipping and I overheard your conversation, but I just feel like I need to let you know that what you felt is absolutely right. And what you are, what you said is absolutely right. And even though we're all going to die, our souls are going to move on. This is just a, an experience. Um, I think it's a school. I've heard it's a school. I'm not that deep. I just had an awakening two years ago, but <laughs> give me like five years. I'm going to know all this shit. Um, yeah. So I think the only way I can make that story right is that I share that with you. So I hope you have a good day. Thank you for listening to my rambling. I know I ramble all the time and I know that I'm saying I'm naked to the people that report me for not being naked, but I really am here in a towel and see. And now I'm completely naked. Okay. Good enough. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. Have a good day.